Hi, and welcome back to the third video of the eighth lecture of Covidonomics. In the last video, we looked at how we could understand hoarding behaviour um, as a type of prisoner's dilemma, a situation where even though everyone would be better off if there was no panic buying, the unique dominant strategy equilibrium is for everyone to panic buy. In this video, we're going to take a bit of a detour. We're going to look at a much more sophisticated model of what's called herd behaviour, a situation where individuals tend to make decisions uh, not necessarily based on their own best information, but based on what they see other people doing. In fact, situations where people ignore their own information. And this is a much more sophisticated uh, type of model to explain things such as panic buying, uh, where people, even though they know that there shouldn't be a shortage, there isn't really a problem there, ignore that private information that they have when they see everybody else engaged in panic buying. So here's our simple model. We're going to have n players who are going to make a choice, and there's two alternatives. There's either choice A or choice B. Now, one of these choices is preferred, so one choice is better than the others, but initially nobody knows which one's better, otherwise it would be a pretty simple game that we'd have here. So there's a 50% chance of each of these options being the best. So 50% chance of A being the best, 50% chance of B being the best. Players are going to take their choice sequentially. So we can think of it as if the players are numbered. So player 1, then player 2, then player 3, etc. up to player N. So player 1 comes in first and they have to choose either A or B. Then player 2 is going to come and they're going to also have to choose either A or B. Then player three comes, and so on, all the way up to player N. Now, to make it interesting, we're going to have some information provided, both to the individual players, but we're also going to allow later players to be able to see what choices earlier players have made, but not their private information. So to capture this idea of private information, we're going to say that each player gets an independent signal of the best option. Now, the only problem is this signal may be incorrect. It's a, an accurate signal in the sense that it's more likely to be correct than not, so we're going to say its probability of being correct is given by beta, which is greater than a half, but beta isn't equal to one. There's a chance that the signal is actually wrong. So an individual player, when making his or her own choice, has their signal. Remember, they know the signal isn't perfect, it may be incorrect, but it's more likely to be correct than not. But they also have other information, and that is that each player gets to see the choice of all previous players, but not the information, not the signal received by the players. A simple example of this situation, uh, which has nothing to do with COVID-19, you go to a new town. In that new town, there's two restaurants, restaurant A and restaurant B. You've looked up the internet and the internet seems to say that restaurant B is the better restaurant. You head towards the restaurants, they're next door to each other. You look in B, it's empty. You look in restaurant A, there's 10 people in restaurant A. Which restaurant do you go into, given your private information, has said restaurant B is better but everybody else is in restaurant A. So that's the decision that you face if you are player number 11. You have your private information, which is imperfect, but you can see what every previous player has done. They've all, in that example I gave, chosen to go to restaurant A. What do you do? Finally, we're just going to have a simplifying assumption. We're going to assume that if a player is indifferent between a and B, then she will just follow her signal. So if she's indifferent, but she's received a signal that says B is better, she will choose B. If she's indifferent, but she has received a signal that says A is better, again, she'll choose A and follow her signal. That just avoids some complications. So to see how this game is going to play out, let's just start off with the first player here. Now, this is going to be pretty simple. That player goes along. There's been no previous players. 
they have their private signal, which is better than no signal at all. Um, in other words, beta is greater than a half. And they have to now choose A or B. Well, if their signal says A, then they know that there's more than a 50% chance that A is the better option. The chance is beta. So they'll choose A. If they get a signal B, then they'll simply choose B. Because, again, that's got a probability of greater than a half of being best. So, in this simple situation, we know that the first player is simply going to follow her signal. Let's suppose that, in fact, the first player does get signal A and they choose A. What's the second player going to do? Well, the first thing to note is that the second player can infer what signal the first player had because the first player always follows her signal. So if the second player comes along and notices that the first player has chosen choice A, then that second player, well, she knows that the first player received a signal of A. Now, suppose that that second player also gets a signal of A. Well, now you've effectively had two independent signals saying A is the best option. And you can work out the probability that A is in fact the best option. It's simply 1 minus the probability of both of the signals being wrong. Remember, they're independent events, so the probability that both signals are wrong is 1 minus beta squared. And so you can work out that the probability of A being the best option is given by beta 2 minus beta. That's greater than beta, which is greater than a half. So using her information and being able to infer what information the first player had, the second player will choose A. But what if the second player gets signal B? Well, now that second player knows that player, the first player, player 1, got a signal of A, and now she sees her own signal, and it's a signal of B. So if there's been two draws, 1A, 1B, hmm, they cancel each other out. Clearly one of the signals is wrong, but the second player doesn't know which signal is wrong. So in a sense, the second player is back with the prior probabilities, or in other words, a 50% chance that A is best, a 50% chance that B is best. That's where our assumption comes in. Remember, we assume that if the, any player is indifferent, then they will follow their signal. Well, in this situation, the second player is indifferent. There's a, pl a signal A and a signal B offset to each other. So she's indifferent between the options. And so she'll just follow her signal and choose B. What about the third player? The first thing to note is that the third player can always infer the signals received by the first two players. So what could happen with that third player? Well, the third player could come along and both of the first two players could have made choice A. If they made choice A, then we know they both got signal A. Alternatively, they could have both made choice B, but that again would mean that they both got signal B. Other option is that one's chosen A and the other's chosen B. But now we know they got different signals. So, how does the third player now have to make her decision? Let's start with the easy case first. Suppose that the third player observes that the first two players have made different choices. Then she knows that one has received signal A, the other has received signal B, and those signals cancel each other out. Well, in that situation, really, the third player has no information from the first two players, and she's just like the first player was. She goes into it with her own information and no other useful information. So, just like the first player, she will follow her own signal. What about, however, if the third player notices that the first two players have made the same choice? Well, now the third player will ignore her own signal and always follow the first two players. 
How can we see this? Well, suppose the first two players have received signal A and they've both chosen choice A. In that situation, if the third player also gets signal A, well, it's pretty clear she'll choose A, the same as the first two players. The interesting case, of course, is what about if the third player gets a signal of B? Well, now, she's really in the situation where she's received three signals. A, A and B. And the signal is more likely to be accurate than not. So, formally, we need to use Bayes' rule to work out the probability that B is the good outcome or the good choice given two A signals and one B. And if we did that, we'd work out that that would be less than a half. Or in other words, the probability that A is a better choice given two A signals and one B is greater than a half. Intuitively, though, rather than working it out through Bayes' rule, we can see it by just thinking about the probability that two signals are right and one is wrong versus the probability that one signal is right and two is wrong. And that's just given here. The probability that each independent signal is right is beta, so the probability that two of the signals are right and one is wrong is beta squared times one minus beta. The probability that two are wrong and one is right, is 1 minus beta squared times beta. And because beta is bigger than a half, the left-hand side is bigger than the right-hand side. So in this situation, the third player should think, well, it's most likely that my signal is wrong. So if the first two players have chosen A, even if the third player gets a signal that says B is better, she will ignore that signal and follow the first two players. So our conclusion is that the third player, when she observes the first two players have chosen A, then she will always choose A, regardless of her private information. This situation just gets stronger the further we go into this game. So imagine you're now the fourth player. You come along and there's three players who have made the choice A. You can't now infer their signals perfectly. It could be the case that two of them got A and one had signal B, which she ignored, or it could be the case that all three of them got A. But given what you do know, there's at least two A's there and possibly three A signals, regardless of what signal you get as the fourth player, you're going to choose choice A as well. So you have now four players hurting on choice A. The fifth player, same again. They can't perfectly infer the signals, but they will ignore their own information and choose A. And so will the fifth player, and so will the sixth player, and so will the seventh player, and so on, right through the game. All the players will herd on that choice A. And this is a general result. As soon as you have two players consecutively choosing choice A or choice B, Every player afterwards will ignore their information and make the same choice. They will herd on that same choice um, in what's sometimes called an information cascade. Information cascades and herding are important economic phenomena, but they relate to imperfect information. So examples are often given in uh, share markets or financial markets. We're all investors go after the same stock. Everybody invests in Tesla because everybody else is investing in Tesla. Even though their private information of many of those investors may say, yeah, it's not the best company to invest in. Or think about managers. Managers will often make similar choices to other managers. Again, that sort of herding behavior that we see. And of course, uh, panic buying, hoarding, is a classic example of herd behaviour. I felt this myself. Just as we went into the second lockdown in Melbourne, I went out, did some shopping that day, and I haven't noticed, we didn't need any toilet paper, but everybody in the supermarket, the first thing they were doing was going and getting that toilet paper. And my private information was, there shouldn't be a problem with the distribution of toilet paper. Guess what? 
I went and bought a great big roll of toilet paper. That's it for now. Talk to you next time. Sorry, uh, one more point. If you want to see some, uh, read some more about this, then uh, this paper by Abhijit Banerjee, uh, Nobel Prize winner um, for development economics. Before he went into development economics, he was a market theorist. Don't know why he changed. He won a Nobel Prize anyway. Talk to you next time.